Every religion has its extremist. Every religion has its person who doesn't understand the religion properly and misinterprets the religion and pushes it for his own agenda. But like I said, don't judge the religion by the people, but judge the people by the teachings of that religion. So based on my opinion regarding Ground Zero, I believe that it's not a problem to have a mosque there. And the center itself is supposed to be a community center. It's going to have, they're going to teach culinary arts. They're going to have a pool. They're going to have all these things that's open to the society of New York at large. Not just for the Muslims, but to the society at large. And then it's going to have a little prayer area <coughs> way on the last floor. I don't see it to be an issue. I think that this is part of the greatness of America, that we should be able to have these things. Basically, why is it that the media, I guess, propagates so much the fundamentalism of the extremists of Islam? I have the same question. Why should we encourage those actions from those ignorant people? Why should we put them every five minutes, throw Osama bin Laden's face on the TV, throw some Taliban's face on the TV, throw this guy's face on the TV, making him some symbol of good, some symbol, like, like if he's an award for him. Look, his face got put on TV today. It's a trophy for him. Why would we do such things? I have no idea. The opposite, the voice that speaks against this and speaks what truly should be believed in Islam is not propagated. Why? Isn't that, what, as Americans, what we want? We want to stop terrorism. We want to stop terroristic behavior then why not bring that opposite voice? Why not bring that voice of dissension and tell them, listen, this is what Muslims truly believe. And put those people on the news and have their voices be heard and take those terrorists and their faces off the news and get rid of their pictures and put them away in the closets so that they know we're not gonna give you the time of day. We're not gonna allow you to do what you want in our country, but we're gonna go ahead and teach what Islam really teaches and what Islam really propagates so that the people can believe properly. And that maybe some of the terrorists can hear the message from the Qur'an, the Sunnah, with the proofs and evidences. And maybe they'll in their hearts say, man, I've been doing the wrong thing the whole time. My belief is wrong. I have to change the way I think. But nobody puts out that message. And it's puzzling to me as well. I think that as Americans, this is something that we should also push for. Is there a dress code for men in Islam? Yes, men are also to dress modestly. Um, man, a man, unlike a woman though, he's allowed to wear a short sleeve shirt. Um, he's allowed to wear shorts as long as they come to the, mid, to the shank of the leg. Um, but he's still to be modest in his dress. He shouldn't wear uh, tight clothing. He shouldn't wear clothing that's exposing um, his body or any of his parts. So he should be modest, just like the woman. Excuse me? What made you convert from Christianity to Islam? What made me convert from Christianity to Islam? Oh, that's a long story. Um, I was raised Christian, like I said, um, Pentecostal to be more exact. Um, my mother and father were not very religious. Um, my grandparents were the ones who actually, my grandparents and my aunt were the ones that actually brought me up in the, in the faith of Christianity. Around the age of 10, 11, I stopped going to the church. I became more interested in sports and things of this nature. Um, around that time in my life also, um, I had a problem believing that Jesus was God. Um, from reading the Bible with my grandmother um, and going to church, I had a problem that Jesus was God. So I would pray to God. I would say, oh God, guide me. God, you know, lead me to that which is correct. And I kept it there. For the next uh, 10 years or so, um, I was a criminal. I was, a <laughs> I was awful. Um, I dropped out of school. Uh, I did drugs, I sold drugs, you name it, I did it. Um, it was around when I reached the age of 21 um, that I joined a gang called Zulu Nation. I joined the gang to a friend that was actually a foster child in my home. My parents always had foster children in the home and my grandparents 
raised foster children for many years. So this child, this, this foster child, he introduced me to the Zulu Nation, which is, was founded in New York um, under Africa Bambada. After a month or so, he met a gentleman who had just came home from prison, who was a good friend of his, who had accepted Islam in prison. So he told us, he pulled us aside, he said, can, I, can you guys give me a ride home tonight? I said, sure, why not? Um, we drove him home, he invited us into his home, and he told us about Islam. He began to tell us about Allah, Muhammad, about Islam in general. He gave us some books on Islam, and it drew our interest, because I found that Islam preached that there was only one God, and that that God is the one who we're to turn to and pray to, and to whom we are to worship. And I said, man, this is what I've believed in the last 10 years. I've been calling upon God. You know, I've never called upon another human being who had to live, eat, sleep, die, etc. God, I didn't believe he had those attributes. So I said, let me look into this further. So I looked into it further, and I believed in all of the concepts of Islam, so I accepted Islam at the age of 21. And I've been Muslim now for about 11, 12 years. Why do I think that Islam is one of the fastest growing religions in the world? I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you, like for instance, one of the things that the media thought that I guess they thought they would accomplish, and I'm not sure if it was their goal or their intention um, after 9-1-1 was to kind of make Islam have an ugly face, but rather it drew the interest of many people. Many people after 9-1-1, we have the largest number of converts after 9-1-1 than prior to 9-1-1. People said, I want to go find out what this religion teaches. We have these people in our country. I'm going to go find out, you know, why we have these terroristic people in our country. And then next you know, they're coming into our centers saying, I want to be Muslim. Um, why, is it, why is it the fastest born religion? God knows best. God knows best. Um, is there forgiveness in Islam? There is forgiveness. Like, Islam. I, like um, uh, forgive. Yes. Um, I have another question. Uh, since Jesus, like you believe, like in his teachings that he was a prophet in his teachings, his teachings though do say like that he is the way and the life and the only way through him is or to God Correct. is through him. Doesn't that kind of contradict each other no, though? Not at all. He says she said that if we believe in the teachings of Jesus, that Jesus said he is the way, he is the light. We believe that. We believe that Jesus was the way, the way he lived his life. The instructions that he taught the people with, that if we were to take his life and, and, and follow that to a T, we would be worshipers of God. We would be perfect examples of what a believer is. So he was the way that guided us to that light of belief by his actions and his teachings. We don't believe that he was the way, meaning that you had to pray to him and then you get to God via him, but we believe that his teachings and his instructions were the way to reach God. As we believe the same as God has said about our Prophet the same way, that لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ That reverently indeed in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example for those who wish in seeing Allah and the last day, meaning the day of judgment. So we believe that the Messengers were the best of examples. They were the best of models for us to follow and emulate. And via these means of emulation and imitation, we can achieve belief, thereby being entered into paradise. Uh, Professor Conwell, are we still good on time? Uh, it's 10.30. Yes, please. Some more questions? Right in the back? About 24 OK. I just wanted to make sure we're not, we're not running late, because I know you wanted to take them into the center to show them the center as well. So just give me a cue when you want me to stop and walk over, so. I had more of like a comment question. Sure. Um, I'm also Christian Pentecostal. Sure. And so like, I know one of the things that you said was um, that something that the reason that impacted you to convert to Islam or Muslim is the fact that when they prayed, it was all like, you know, when you went over to me, like, it was all kind of, like, everybody stopped and prayed. Yes. But here in America, as a melting pot society, which you also mentioned, yes. 
And I didn't say that we were taught that we were taught that in Pentecost in, in the religion of Christianity, but that is how we behave as human beings. That is how we behave. She was basically saying that she understands why I accepted Islam and that she can see that basically um, me being overseas and seeing how God is surrounded around life. I mean, life is surrounded around God, not God around life. Um, and that here, because of, I said it, it was a melting pot, that we can't do that here. But I'll give you some prime examples. As a Muslim, I'm to pray five times a day. Okay? Those five times a day are set and established. I can't change the times. They change based on the sun. Okay? But as a Muslim living in this society, when it's time to pray, no matter where I am, I stop what I'm doing and I pray. I haven't had a job except that I told them at this time is my time for prayer. If a person can go out to smoke a cigarette for five minutes, you can give me five minutes to go worship my Lord. I will, and actually after 9-1-1 it was a big uh, problem for me. After 9-1-1, you know, I lived in New Jersey. I just came to Rockford five years ago. Uh, I lived 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away by, by highway from the trade center. I was once in West New York, which is across the water from the trade center, and it was time to pray. So I parked my van, I got my prayer rug out, and I start praying. I got back in my van after I finished my prayer, five cop cars came. <laughs> what were you doing? I was praying. Why you were praying here? I can't pray here. Why can't I pray here? You know, why are you praying at this time? Because my, God, my Lord commanded me to pray. So I stopped and I prayed. What do you have in your van? Open it up. Check it. <laughs> you know, what do you want me to tell you? This was, this was big for me after 911 because I refused to let the stigma keep me from worshiping my God. And this happened to me on many occasions. One time I even got arrested for three days. And I was released after three days, not told why I was arrested, not, the judge basically told me, be quiet, go home, thank, thank, thank God that we're not keeping you. I couldn't get a lawyer to take my case, nothing. So as human beings, we do have the right, even though we live here in this society, we shouldn't let the society control us, but we should be able to control our own actions and allow our expertise. If I have an expertise, you're not gonna, I'm gonna tell my boss, you need me. I have the expertise, I'm a great employee. I'm a great worker and you're not gonna find anybody else like me. And I'm confident of that. So all I need is these five minutes. If you can't give me these five minutes, then I don't wanna work for you. And I'll give you another example. I worked for Coca-Cola when I first came to Rockford. A friend of mine called me and he said, we're going on Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. I said, well, I have to ask permission first. He said, your ticket is paid for already. I said, man, you put me in a hard position. I said, you know, you should give me some time so I can ask the job for permission. He said, and we're gone for five weeks. This was my first year on the job, okay? So I went to my boss, I told him, I said, listen, the pilgrimage is something important in the life of a Muslim. If we have the ability to make the pilgrimage, we must do it. If we have the money, the means, we have to do it. There's an obligation upon us. Somebody has paid for that, and I have to go. I'm not asking you to pay me while I'm gone. You don't have to pay me for the five weeks that I'm not gone, that I'm not here working, but I need to leave. My boy said, you're a good worker, we'll see you when you get back. You know, so people are understanding. People are willing to understand as long as you're willing to explain to them your beliefs, and you seem to be an upright person and, and, and you stand on your ground, you know, and, and you do your job. I haven't found a problem here in the States doing those things. You said that when somebody's in the grave after death, that their health begins if that's their destination? Well, not their health, their not punishment. Their punishment starts. Can you compare and contrast purgatory in a Catholic sense to that, that area between death and heaven and hell? I have no idea what purgatory in Catholicism is. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't studied Catholicism to that extent. You said that some of the um, people have children, they go to public schools. Do they have problems with parents at that time if they experience school hours? As far as some of the Muslim children that go to public schools, I know, as far as the ones that I know that have tra transferred from here to public school because we had some high school students prior to us completing high school who had had to go to Auburn and Guilford and some of these other high schools to go ahead and complete high school. These particular students from the recount that they came back and they told us they were able to go to their teachers and go to the principal. The parents went to the principal and told the parents and told the principal, listen, 
at one o'clock. This is our prayer time. Um, can you set five minutes or a room aside for my child so that he can go and pray and come back? And naturally, our students, um, those students who were here, not, and not to brag, they, they were high honor students and they were actually in the advanced Excel program in, in Auburn. Um, so it was no problem. The principal agreed. And actually, some of them actually used to come here for Friday worship as well. They used to leave school and come for Friday worship. So the school was able to accommodate some of these requests as well.